Yes, uh, thank you. First of all, on behalf of the uh, uh, European Parliament, especially the rapporteurs, we would like to thank you for the invitation for this very important high-level meeting. It's uh, especially important for us because we are just ahead of the uh, very important decisions. But um, uh, first of all, I would like to let me just describe our, uh, our legal position today. And as you know, according to the treaty, European Parliament has, a, uh, has in a constant procedure so we formally, we should wait for the common position of the Council and next to, to give our, our consent to, the, to this proposal. European Parliament is not waiting, and not only uh, uh, because of his uh, uh, gentle uh, critic from uh, Commissioner Ettinger saying what we were doing in 13-14, uh, but, uh, uh, but because we, uh, uh, we would like to be part of the debate about the future of European Union. So that's why uh, we, would like, we, we took immediately, we, we took the floor after the presentation of the, repo, of the proposal of the Commission about the future of EU finances. And in fact, we expect the Council will also take the clear position on the five scenarios, or maybe the mixture of scenarios. So first, we reacted to our resolution uh, after presentation of the document from June. And now we, are, uh, we have just voted the, uh, our report in the Budget Committee, which has been accepted by all, all the political parties. And uh, we will vote it in th uh, next week. Next week we will vote the, our report of future MFF. The question of what is the legal importance of this, of this document. Of course, it, it has no uh, legal uh, significance, but politically speaking, this is a very clear voice from the Parliament. What we expect from the Commission and from the Council uh, as far as concerns the, the MFF. In, but let's not be uh, very, very naive. I mean, the European Parliament is not the, the body which is absolutely united. We have different voices in the Parliament, and we have different voices concerning several elements. We, we know that in next, uh, uh, next Wednesday, we will have the voting, and the majority of the Parliament will vote in favor of this report. This is what we expect. And they, it means that the main political families, they will support it, at, at least the uh, EPP and the socialists, they will support it, the liberals, now they are thinking about especially the timing. But I think that the majority of Parliament will vote in favor next week. And this, uh, uh, but we also, we will prepare our position just after publication in May. Because after the 2nd of May, we will immediately react with our new document, what we think about the proposal of the Commission. And we will uh, try to be active in the coming months uh, trying to find a common position with the Council and to anticipate the situation of, of uh, receiving the common position from the Council. This is not the game, it means that what we, if we can say at the end yes or no. We would like to say yes at the end, but to, for this we need a political agreement of all the Member States and of course the political parties in the, in the European Parliament. European Parliament is not the set of members. European Parliament is a representation of the political parties working in, in Europe. So that's why we count on the uh, very, very deep analysis made inside the political families in the governments, national parliaments, and in the European Parliament. Because this is very important. We have now the common position of the EPP. We have the common position of the socialists. We hope that it will be reflected in the debate inside the Council. Now, what we, uh, uh, what we were now were doing in, in, in our document, first, we are very grateful that in the, in the speech of the minister, but also the commissioner, and the minister responsible for the Bulgarian presidency, it's very clear that MFF is not about numbers, that MFF is not just about money. This debate about MFF is about the future of EU. This is, a, a, this is, in fact, the debate of what we really want, what we expect from you, all together, with all the differences we are facing. What we would like the EU to be after Brexit, because it will be different to you. So what we expect from you after the Brexit? The real question is not about 1%. The real question is what about 27 member states' policies during the next seven years? Will the member states agree 
on the security policy inside Europe? And what will be this part which will be financed together in the European budget? Without the decision about the immigration policy, the debate about the budget is useless. So I think that the MFF is about the future next seven years in the European Union and in different policies. This is uh, about social policy, this is about the uh, defense, this is about security. So that's why when we discuss the question of 1% or more or less, we expect differently than the ministers of finance, we expect the debate what we would like to do together. I mean, in, as Mr. Commissioner said, in the unanimity. What we would like to do together. Uh, do, you, do we agree uh, about the competences of EU? Can we define our goals for seven years? Which part of this will be financed from the common budget? How much it will cost? Where is the money? Where is the money? I think we, the Parliament, we expect this kind of debate, a very serious debate. Because if the debate starts with 1% full stop, it, this is a little bit different. This is like, what can we do with 1%? We expect a very serious debate about the future competences and goals. So that's why, please do not be surprised that we propose in our report, in the three days which will be voted, we propose 1.3 GNI. According to our very simplified analysis, we, what we say is, okay, let's start working. Let's start with something. Something means for us, not 1.3. Something for us means, let's start with the assumptions that we will keep cohesion policy and agriculture policy on the same level like today without British. Next, let's multiply Erasmus, because we agree it's important. Let's triple it. Let's double the COSME and the EAE. And next, let's give the numbers from the European Commission concerning the new priorities. This 10 billion, what the Commissioner just said. And we made the analysis and say, at the end, if we think seriously, at the end we have 1.28, 1.29, according to today's prices. Because I know, as a rapporteur, that some analysis from the member states shows that if we have the good economic trends, the 1% will be different in seven years than today. We know that this is this kind of approach. But if everything is okay, and we, if we don't have the crisis, Okay, but, but okay, let's start with something. Our proposal as a parliament, okay, let's start with something concrete. And let's discuss what you'd like to do. What is the reaction of the European Commission on this? What is the reaction of the European Council from our proposal? We are very glad that the Committee of Regions, they shared the same view. And the president who is here, they shared the same, the same numbers. Let's start with something. Let's start with not saying 1%, full stop. Let's start with the analysis with the numbers and the real content. So that's why this is first. We agree that the, uh, that the priorities uh, should be like the commissioner uh, explained, that the new priorities, so-called new priorities, but also let's very clearly define what we really mean by, for example, immigration. These are two elements, internal policy, social policy, I mean, the, everything which we can call the problem of, uh, of adopting the, the immigrants or refugees, and we have the security, which is different. That's why we would like to be very clear. We, we absolutely agree with the new priorities, but we think we should very clearly say, what, you, what about so-called traditional policies or old policies? If we think that these policies are, are just for the convergence, as you, we know very well, the reaction will be no traditional policies for the net payers. Or it's different. We expect that it will be a clear position from the Council. I mean, what is the, what is the, the proposal for the post-Brexit EU? This is, uh, this is what we expect. We think that we should start with seven years, of course, if we start 21, and not starting with 23. We should start 1st January 21. This is what the people expect from us. If we start, we should start seven years, and next we will have the uh, uh, five plus five. But I would like to, to inform you that some people in the parliament will, will oppose because they, they think it should be uh, five 
because it should be linked to the uh, electoral uh, period of, of the parliament. The majority of parliament will, uh, will not agree. The majority of parliament will vote seven years as, as a starting point. We will be uh, very in favor of more flexibility in the budget because the, nobody can, can predict all the unexpected situations. So the budget should be flexible, more flexible. We should absolutely propose to keep the money which is not spent in the budget. We, uh, uh, we, we will propose to keep, for example, the money which comes from the fines, to keep it in the budget, to have the new elements, not to send it back to the member states. This is the position of, of, of the parliament which is not new. We have already proposed it at the end. We will propose also some elements of sectorial policies, but not some of them, because we are waiting for the proposal from the Commission concerning the sectorial policy at the end of, uh, of May. And the, the committees are preparing their position to this. Just, just to, to explain uh, our strategy. First, we are waiting for the proposal of the Commission. Just uh, in the coming days, uh, uh, the political uh, groups uh, will propose the so-called contact group. The contact group in the parliament uh, will be led by the president of the parliament. It shows how important the MFF will be for the parliament for coming months. So the president of the parliament will, will lead the contact group with the uh, representative of all the political groups together. So we will be ready to work very quickly. We understand the situation is like the extraordinary fast track. Some of the colleagues, they always say that it's absolutely impossible. But you know, in politics, you can never say never. I mean, everything is possible if we have the political will. If we have the political will to do it, we will do it. If there is no political will, we will never do it, and everything will be after the elections. And in fact, nobody knows what will happen after the elections. I think this is the, the real problem. So we are ready to work very hard, and we are ready to, to, uh, to make it in a very extraordinary way, as, as soon as possible. But this is the, the, our, our approach with the contact group. We know very well that if we want to have an agreement, it should be finalized at the latest in January. Because next we will start the campaign, and you know the last meeting of the parliament will be in April. In April will be the last meeting of this parliament. We have, a, uh, we have the elections in May. So, uh, so that's why the, the whole logic will be. And the, the parliament today would like to avoid using MFF as a weapon for next elections. Let's be very clear. Because if it's not ready, if there is no agreement, all the political groups will use it uh, either to defend something or to make promises for coming, for coming years. I think that uh, uh, this is the moment that we would like to, 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 to do as, as much as possible to avoid it, because this is the moment uh, that we have to think seriously about the post-Brexit EU. So that's why, just to summarize, I said that uh, uh, next week, Parliament will vote the report. And if it's not legally uh, uh, decisive, it's politically quite important because we are trying to find a compromise in the parliament, among the political groups. Let's, let me uh, uh, repeat, this, this is not the agreement between the members. This is between the political families, which are also in the governments. So we are trying to find this kind of agreement, and we are ready to work very, very hard and very quickly, and we are ready to be very rational and pragmatic. And this is also very important. This is not the time of promises and something which is irrealistic. We are ready to be very pragmatic, very concrete, but we need trust, we need the information, the clear exchange of information and analysis, including financial analysis, what we can expect. And this is the base for our work. So please, let's take into granted that we are absolutely open to any debate. It's not, it's not very easy in the parliament, but we will do it. Thank you.